If you want to feel secure again after your trust has been destroyed, I'm going to get you to pay attention to two things. Number one is how do you develop trust? How do you get trust? How do you trust somebody? And virtually everyone gets this wrong. Number two thing I want you to pay attention to is what is security? How do you get security? How do you get yourself to feel secure? And how do you be secure and being able to trust other people again without the baggage that you have? And number three that I want you to pay attention to in this video, if you stay throughout the whole video, I'm gonna tell you the step-by-step -step things you need to do to be able to become secure again after your trust has been destroyed. If it's the first time you're watching this and the first time you're visiting this channel, my name is Ron John. I'm the author of Relationships 101. It's on Amazon, it's on Relationships Dynamics and the male-female dynamics and how relationships have come to be. I'm the trainer, I'm the head trainer at Great Relationships University. I, am, I own the number one Tantra therapy in Las Vegas and essentially the US per Google. And I've also been a dating and relationships consultant for over 13 years. So the number one thing I want you to pay attention to is this. What is trust and how do you develop trust? And virtually, every, virtually everyone gets this wrong. Not everybody. Most people gets this wrong. How you develop trust? Trust is your being able to rely upon something as something that's true. Your ability to rely upon something as true. Now, I want you to make this delineation because it's a very important delineation that will help you be able to form for yourself trust. Now, I'll go over the step-by-step -step things on how you can be able to trust somebody. But let me first get this very, very deep psychology so that you can have the right mind frame to be able to have trust. Because with the wrong mind frame, you're gonna find it very, very hard to develop trust because you don't know how to trust. You don't know what are the indicators for you to be able to trust. So are you ready? The delineation that you have to make is this, faith and belief. Recognize what a belief is and recognize what faith is. Belief is merely any idea which you have an emotional investment. Faith is any belief which requires and in fact denies proof of evidence. You understand? Faith in something and whether you're religious or you're not religious, this makes sense to you because this makes logical sense to you because when you look at everything you think about, it applies. Faith is any belief that you have which requires no proof. And in, in fact, it denies proof. What do I mean by that? I mean anyone who has faith, when you provide them proof, they will, it will only strengthen their faith by denying the proof. Somebody has faith in something, let's say in fact, let's say religion, and they have belief, they have faith in it because faith doesn't require any evidence. And in fact, when you show that person evidence contradictory to what they believe in, their faith, that, they require, that requires no evidence, the denial of that evidence strengthens their faith. They just say, oh, you know, this is just a test against my faith. The more faith I have, if I increase my faith, the more I am strengthened with my faith. Because anything you present to me, which uh, whether it makes sense, whether it makes, makes logical sense or not, whether it's an evidence against what I believe, if I strengthen my faith, I in fact, by definition, have more faith. So faith is anything, any belief which doesn't require evidence, and in fact, denies that evidence, strengthens their faith. Do you understand? Test it for yourself. Try arguing with someone who's religious. Any evidence you give them only strengthens their faith by arguing against your, your, um, your contradiction to their belief. Now, any belief, a belief is just an idea. So let's, let's put this in the context of relationships. Let's get, put this in the context of someone who 
you're interacting with on a daily basis, who in fact could be your partner, could be your friend, a very close friend, someone who has the ability or has destroyed your trust. If they are, if you have faith in them, means that you believe them, you trust them, you have confidence in them without requiring evidence. So by definition, you require evidence for you to be able to appropriately trust. For you to be able to have appropriate confidence about something, confidence being your, rely, your, your ability to rely upon something to be true. Your ability to rely upon something that is true, that is something that you can have confidence about. So if you are confident about somebody without requiring proof, you have faith in them. And faith will get you devastation because you are trusting somebody without requiring evidence. You just trust them blindly. You understand? Just like someone who has faith in anything has belief in something blindly. In fact, denies evidence. Let me ask you a question. Where in your relationship are you denying evidence? There are a lot of people who are denying evidence because they really have a strong bias about their partner. They don't see reality because they have a strong, they love their partner. They want to see them as the best person that they are. They deny the things that, that their wrongdoings. They don't see their partner objectively, but they can easily see other people objectively because they don't have a bias towards them. Do you understand? So you're having faith in your partner and you're having trust because you have faith will get you the result that you want, or that you deserve, which is walking around blindly will get you into accidents. Just like trusting blindly will get you into trouble, into accidents, relationship accidents. Now, put the, the contradiction to that, the, the other side to that is you're trusting people based on what they've demonstrated. Now do you see why I made you think about the delineation in your mind? Now you see why it's incredibly important for you to make the delineation in your mind. Belief and faith. Trust that's based on, that's warranted, warranted trust, justified trust. I want you to look at trust as justified trust rather than blind trust. Justified trust it's trust that because you have dem they have demonstrated it to you. Sometimes when they say something and you imagine that you, you believe that that person is worthwhile and that person has a track record of not lying, has a track record of fulfilling the things that they said they would do, it's much easier for you to, have, uh, to believe in what they say. And so you have more, a little bit more trust with that person rather than someone who doesn't have a track record of being convincing or you're being relying upon what they say is true. You understand? But trust will be built over time. Any trust which you have, which hasn't been built, been demonstrated, who is not justified trust, is faith. You're merely blindly believing what they say is true. And you will deserve what comes for you. Because you have walked around blindly in the relationship. When you walk around, close your eyes right now. Well, not if you're driving. If you close your eyes and you walk around the house and you're not familiar with your, um, your surroundings as a blind person would be, you would, you would get yourself into an accident. If you drive around blindly, you're going to get yourself into an accident. If you trust around blindly, you're going to deserve what you get. Do you understand? Which is devastation. So, number two thing I wanted to talk about is how do you feel secure? I want you to recognize that security is just a sensation. Security is just a feeling. There is no such thing that will give you security. No amounts of millions and billions of dollars that will help give you security. How many billions of dollars will you need when you're on a plane and the plane is crashing at 800 miles per hour into the ground, nothing stopping it? And there's no course correction and there's no course of safety. No amount of trillions of dollars will give you security. There was, one, there was once a man who had 
more money in the bank than the government of the United States. His name was Steve Jobs and he died at 54 with pancreatic cancer. No amount of money will give you security. People imagine that money gives them security. They can buy anything. Security, remember, is just a sensation and the only security that you have, pay attention, the only security that you have is your ability to keep your head above water and inspire other people to help you if you need it. Help doesn't necessarily mean from a bad place. Help could very well be your ability to negotiate with people. People who are truly successful in, the, in their life have incredible abilities to negotiate. How do you get to buy something who is, who, which is worth uh, a quarter of a million dollars? You negotiate, you say, you want something, I've got it. What would it take for you to be able, for us to be able to trade? That is called a negotiation skill. Do you have that skill? Do you have the skill of communication? Ability to negotiate using words. That is a form of inspiring other people to help you if you need it. That will give you security. So going back, security is just a sensation. It's not something you can get from money. So how do you become secure again? From that definition, from that delineation, that intelligent delineation about beliefs, ideas, faith, and trust, and, um, and security. You can be secure by recognizing that security is something that you have for yourself. Something is a feeling that you have. And the only way you can be secure is your ability to survive and thrive in your own life, your personal development, and your ability to inspire other people to help you if you need it. How can you feel secure in, in a trust with somebody? Or how can you rejuvenate your security with somebody? How can you trust again and be secure about that trust? You have to rely upon your ability to distinguish what is real and what is faith. What is justified trust, justified confidence, and what is faith confidence? which is not actually confidence. Once you make that delineation, you'll go through step by step. You will see what other people say. Take it with a table of salt and say to yourself, whatever you say has to be demonstrated. Otherwise, I have little belief in it. I have little trust in it. And once they've demonstrated it to you, only then will you have the ability to now trust because now they've demonstrated their, your confidence in them is justified. You have justified trust in them. People tell you that trust requires time. Yes, absolutely, trust requires a long period of time. Sometimes, sometimes they can, they, you can really tell about the person and they, they demonstrate it in a short period of time, in which case you have a short amount of period of time to be able to trust that person. Never trust blindly. That is faith. Any belief that requires and in fact denies evidence is faith. But when you do have faith with somebody, recognize it's faith. Do you understand? Recognize that you have infatuation with that person and you can't see anything they do wrong because your brain is drugging you in an infatuation phase which lasts up to 18 months first time you meet somebody. Sometimes less sometimes more, depending on your access to them. And recognize that, recognize when you have faith and when you have trust, when you have confidence, justified trust, or unjustified trust, which is faith. If you want to learn more about relationships, I encourage you to go to Amazon and read the book Relationships 101. You can search it, Relationships 101 by Rowan John. And if you want to learn more about relationships and social dynamics and how you can become really good at negotiation, become really good communicating with people and relationships, go to greatrelationshipsu.com and share this with other people because you're making the world a better place by sharing this with others. And if you have any questions, um, share it in the comments below. I would love to hear them. And if you appreciate this video, you can show that appreciation by clicking the like or the heart button. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.